Earnings missed estimates, but some segments were stronger and the outlook is a little bit more positive. Um, tell me exactly how you forecast the economy going and what impact that will have on North Hydro. Uh, uh, I would say that uh, with regard to the, the quarterly result, it was impacted by uh, uh, several factors. It, uh, it was uh, higher raw material cost, but also uh, impacted by the fact that we are running our aluminum refinery uh, in Brazil and also the bauxite mine and the Alba smelter with uh, 50% capacity. So this is impacting the result. But if you look at the underlying situation in the market, uh, it, is, uh, it looks quite positive. Good demand. The supply demand balance is also now moving in a more, uh, I would say, a positive situation seen from our side with, the, in fact, uh, expected the deficit of about one and a half million tons this year. Um, given the rise in your shares today, and I think that they're up, uh, you know, a, a lot more than it was maybe expected when we had the earnings out. Are you relieved that actually the markets are, you know, even though we had a lot of headwinds, they're kind of relieved about, you know, what the future looks like? Well, that could be one uh, explanation. I, I would also say that there are several uh, areas in Hydro that uh, uh, develops uh, very positively. We have the downstream business that is doing uh, very well. See good development in uh, extruded solutions, which was the acquisition that we did uh, last uh, last year. Uh, there are good volume development and also margin developments in both whole products and extruded solutions. So. Uh, there are good, good uh, market developments. Uh, we also see, of course, that, the, uh, as I mentioned, the market is, uh, is quite tight. The global inventories are going down, and uh, the fact that uh, also not only the quarterly uh, supply-demand balance is in the deficit, but also that we expect that there will be a deficit for the whole year 2018. So uh, I would say that there are, there are several uh, factors that may have an impact on that. Uh, how much do you worry about the trade dispute, about the tariffs in the automobile sector, and do you have a contingency plan? Well, we we, um, uh, we are following that carefully, and uh, of course we have, uh, uh, in, for example, in the U.S., we have uh, several extrusion plants uh, with about 600,000 tons capacity that are now buying metal from the market at a much higher price uh, due to the 10% uh, uh, duties. But um, uh, the price uh, for the products has also developed, so we see that we have uh, very similar margins today as we had before, uh, introduction of uh, the duty. So it seems that it is the end users that, uh, that is paying for this. But, uh, of course, we are concerned about the long-term effect, uh, what is going to happen with trade, uh, the global trade going forward. Uh, if uh, the policy will be eye for an eye uh, going forward, uh, we know that uh, Mahatma Gandhi said that eye for an eye will, will make uh, the, bl uh, the world blind. And uh, if that continues, uh, we are not very positive, but uh, I would say that uh, um, the, the underlying uh, sentiment in the market for aluminium is quite, quite positive because the, there is a lot of substitution ongoing and there is also a lot of need for aluminium in uh, in, in cars and uh, in other important uh, market segments. Uh, but at this moment in time, are you expecting the trade dispute to actually deepen? Yeah, it's, uh, if, 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 it, if the trade is now uh, hampering the global uh, economic development, that is negative because the demand for aluminium is a function of a global GDP, uh, more or less. So, so of course, that could, that could be a, an issue going forward.